What does it mean to be a citizen of the world? Do we lose our allegiance to our community? Our state? Our nation? How can a person find meaning and purpose in a realm so large? The answer is simple. A citizen of the world loves all humanity, past, present, and future, and lives a life of service. That is the heart of the matter. That is the heart of Francis Robicek, MD, PhD, World Citizen. He was born Ferenc Robicek in Mieszkolc, Hungary on July 4, 1925. His father was an executive of the Shell Oil Company and his mother an Oxford-educated English teacher. An only child, Francis lost his father when he was 11. The death influenced the boy in two ways. It discouraged him from ever smoking and stimulated his fascination with disease, particularly chest ailments. The rigors of his high school education at the Royal Catholic Secondary School steeped him in the humanities, and he graduated proficient in four languages, Latin, French, German, and Hungarian. Francis would have to learn English on his own. Like all Europeans, he began studying his chosen field immediately after high school. In his case, that meant medical school. In World War II, the University of Budapest was destroyed in the bombing, and classes were makeshift. Francis moved into the city general hospital as a second-year medical student, where he was on call every night for four years. 120 patients were cared for by only the chief of surgery, three assistant surgeons, and three medical students. They did the best they could with what they had available. Francis says that experience enabled him to cope with any situation, with or without up-to-date technology. In 1949, he graduated from the university, summa cum laude. Francis met his wife, Lily, when he was a young surgeon and she was a student nurse. He began to publish scientific papers that attracted the attention of the medical profession beyond Hungary. In 1954, he was invited to study at the Karolinska Institute in Sweden. He learned many new techniques, but he also saw how people lived on the other side of the Iron Curtain. He made the decision that he and his wife would leave for the West at the first opportunity. They didn't want their children to be born into the political system of Hungary. Two years later, Francis and Lily, who was now six months pregnant, escaped as the Russians marched in to crush the short-lived Hungarian Revolution of 1956. Using passports to East Germany, where Francis had been a visiting professor, the Robicheks left their luggage in the Charita Hospital in East Berlin and crossed to the West. They applied for visas to the US, Canada, India, and Denmark, planning to accept the first that was issued. Francis's uncle Roby lived in Charlotte and enlisted the aid of North Carolina Congressman Charles Jonas. The United States won. Francis and Lily decided to visit his uncle for a week. It has been the longest week in history. While in Charlotte, Francis met Dr. Paul Sanger, a thoracic surgeon who wanted to start a cardiac surgical unit. Francis jumped at the opportunity. A jack of all trades, Francis could operate a hard lung machine and he was fluent in cardiology. Fluency in English was another matter. Francis says one of the worst events in his life happened that first week in Charlotte. Paul Sanger took him to the County Medical Society and to his surprise introduced him as the evening speaker, lecturing on the current medical developments in Europe. Francis was determined never to repeat the experience. He and Lily stopped speaking Hungarian to each other. Within a few months, they both were well-versed in English. Francis's inventive ideas found fertile ground in Charlotte. He built a heart-lung machine in a garage with a mechanical engineer and was soon doing open-heart surgery. His research found support from a good friend of Paul Sanger, Danny Heinemann. The Heinemann Research Foundation had been established in 1940, and the corporate office and laboratory are located on the campus of Carolina's Medical Center. Francis took the helm in 1957, 
and under his supervision, Heinemann has grown to be an internationally recognized research and outreach organization that has assisted in developing some of the key breakthroughs in cardiovascular research. Upon the death of Paul Sanger in 1968, Francis named the clinic in his honor. Today, the Sanger Clinic is part of Carolina's Medical Center and leads the region in cardiac care. Francis Robicek's medical achievements have shaped the course of cardiovascular and thoracic care at CMC and throughout the world. Francis's legacy includes helping Carolina's Medical Center and Charlotte to establish a reputation among the nation's premier hospitals and cities for heart care. He has had an enormous impact in uh, improving techniques and in looking after his patients before and after. Uh, he is uh, a wonderful continuation doctor who regards his surgical uh, involvement as of course a central part but only a part of getting the person better who has suffered from uh, problems of the heart. I think that impact uh, of his has been worldwide because he's known everywhere for this. His greatest accomplishment was the foundation of the vascular surgery, contribution to the foundation of cardiovascular surgery in Hungary and also in the United States. He was one of the pioneers. He has contributed a, a huge number of scientific uh, sort of uh, uh, new strategies for surgery. Uh, he has introduced an incredible amount of uh, new material in our field. I've always admired Dr. Robicek uh, for his determination and his dedication uh, to uh, the field uh, of cardiac surgery. He is a, tr a true uh, pioneer. In other field, he was a pioneer in, we can say, all field of cardiac surgery. Adult, as pediatric, uh, closed heart or uh, with bypass. He was at the beginning of everything and that was fantastic because he was a pioneer, but he was active when the pioneer disappeared and he's still there, so that is fantastic. Among his many honors, the most recent was awarded in Venice, Italy, where the European Society of Cardiovascular Thoracic Surgeons proclaimed him an honorary member of the European Society for Cardiovascular Surgery. So I'm very proud and very pleased to welcome you to our gala dinner with your lovely wife and your entire crew. Francis, thank you very much. A citizen of the world understands how connected and how small that world really is. Medical treatments and advances are not limited to the boundaries of one country or one culture. Francis has always nurtured and supported the development of superior medical care for the benefit of all humanity. His commitment has taken him around the globe particularly to Latin America, where he worked side by side, training surgeons in Honduras and Guatemala. In the name of uh, our people in Guatemala, I think it's, uh, it's a good you know, and great uh, thing he did, and his uh, work that he began is a benefit to many people in Guatemala. A man of science, he created the idea as a man of action, he began the work, which is our heart unit in Guatemala, and I am very grateful. Francis's achievements are as broad as they are impressive. Just look up Renaissance Man in the dictionary. His curiosity led him to discoveries in the most unexpected places. While working in Central America, he became interested in Mayan culture. Looking for written scholarly information, he found precious little. So he began his own research and made a major breakthrough in Mayan iconography. He realized that the lost writings of the Maya consisted of decorations on Mayan ceramics that alternated pictures with short text. Assembling the ceramic artifacts like dominoes revealed a kind of ceramic comic book. 
Of course, he encountered skepticism from some professional archaeologists. One pointedly dismissed him, saying, How would you like to have your tooth pulled by an amateur dentist? Francis replied, Professionals built the Titanic. Amateurs built the Ark. Francis sees no conflict between science and art. He paints, enjoys photography, and writing poetry. Music holds a special interest, and his collection of medieval Dutch paintings and pre-Columbian art have been shared with the community through area museums. Charlotte truly is blessed because of the generosity of Dr. Francis Robicek, and particularly so with regard to the Mint Museum of Art and its collection. In the area of pre-Columbian art, which is a passion of Francis's for decades, he has been very kind and generous and has given many, many wonderful objects to the museum. The pre-Columbian collection is known as one of the finest in the Southeast and truly one of the finest within the United States. Reflecting on his career, Francis cites his work in building cardiac programs in Hungary, Romania, Lithuania, Charlotte, and Guatemala, and his introduction of new cardiovascular surgical techniques as some of the things of which he is most proud. But what may be his greatest achievement for the world is not the achievement he considers most important. If you want to know that, ask him about his family. Francis Robicek, world citizen, and now ambassador to the world. Ambassador for the Sanger Clinic, for Carolina's Medical Center, and for the people of Charlotte. A man who is touched by the past. A man who has never wasted a moment of the present. A man who has spent his life making the future brighter for all humanity.